G'day Knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here. Now today's project is going to be a little different to what I normally do. There'll be no pallets involved or even old recycled materials. You see, I've had a request from my oldest teenage son, Jack, and he said, Dad, can you build for me and my mates a grind box? <whistles> Stick with me. For those not in the know, a grind box is a box that skateboarders or BMX riders use to perform their tricks and it looks something like this. Looks pretty easy? Well it is and it's a great project for the kids to build by themselves or even for you as a parent or grandparent to build as a gift for your kids or your grandkids. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. Now the grind box itself in imperial measurements is going to be eight feet long by two feet wide by one foot high, which equates in metric to 2.4 meters long to 600 millimeters wide and 300 mil high. And I'm framing it all at a 4 x 2 framing pine. Now to clad the outside of the grind box, I'm using this 3 quarter inch plywood. Now here in Australia, I think the closest you can get to 3 quarter inch plywood is 17 millimeters. Now don't worry about remembering all the materials and tools required for this job, because I'll leave a list in the description box down below. That way you can copy it, print it out, and refer back to it when you need to. Now building the framework for the grind box is dead simple. Basically all it is is a combination of two framed up rectangles. Here's the base, which I've already made, and that sits hard down on the ground. And all that is is four sides screwed together using exterior grade screws. And I've also got a noggin, which I've screwed in place, in the center here and that holds the whole framework together. Now the next step is to build the top frame which is a bit more heavy duty and that'll be connected to the base using a series of uprights. Just like that. And also remember before you use power tools to make sure you've got your protective equipment on like earmuffs and some goggles. Just a quick tip before we start screwing this thing together, make sure that you pre-drill your holes first. That way your timber won't split when you insert your screws. Now with this top frame, it needs to be quite strong because it's gonna take quite a beating. So to achieve that, I'm going to insert these noggins just like that, every 12 inches or so along the entire length. And if I don't hurry up, I'm going to get wet. It is about to pour. Okay, now that the frames are built, we have our top frame and our bottom frame. The next thing to do is to go ahead and cut the uprights that are going to separate those two frames apart. Now to save some time, I've already gone ahead and pre-cut them. Now, one thing to remember is that my grind box is going to be one foot or 300 millimeters high. So the length of your uprights is going to be one foot or 300 millimeters less the thickness of the ply that's going to be sitting on top. And if you do that, you'll get all the ply you need just from one sheet of 8 before. Now how's this for a great Uncle Knacker's time saving tip? You can see on this upright that I've already pre-drilled the holes. Take the upright or the template and place it on top of the next upright that needs to be drilled. Just like that. Now you can drill through the holes on that template and it'll leave a mark on the next piece ready to be drilled out. Now that is a great time saving tip. Okay, it's time to install the uprights, and you'll notice that I've got the frame sitting on blocks. Okay. 
That was too easy. Now it's just time to screw the top frame on. Now you'll find the top frame easier to attach if the grind box is lying on its side. So here's the grind box all framed up and it's looking absolutely fantastic. It is so solid and there is zero wobble, which is absolutely spot on. Now all we need to do now is cut the ply and fix it to the sides and the top. Now when it comes time to cutting the plywood for the grind box, here's a really good tip. Get the coping that you're going to be using for the grind box and clamp that down to the plywood. That way the base of your saw can run hard up against that edge, giving you a nice clean cut. And if you're not very confident in doing that, you might be able to get the hardware shop where you bought the ply from to cut it for you. Beautiful. Now it's time to put the ply on, keeping it flush with the top edge here. So there you go, it's looking fantastic. Now all we need to do is add the coping. Make sure you keep those screw heads nice and flush with the top of the coping. Before the boys start skating on this, I want to give it a protective coat. So I'm going to give it a quick sand, then a couple of coats of varnish, whack on the wheels, then she's ready for action. And to make moving this big beast around a bit easier, I'm simply going to screw on these non-swivel wheels. Now check this out. How easy was that? So there it is, all done. And I absolutely love it. Great tip, knackers! Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and also found it useful. I had an absolute ball making it. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome and please click that subscribe button that way you won't miss out on any future videos and don't forget to click the old thumbs up button that's always greatly appreciated now just in case you were wondering what finish i put on top of the grind box it was this marine grade satin clear varnish good stuff now don't go just yet, there'll be a few photos going backwards and forwards of the finished product and even some skaters in action. Okay, well I'm done. I think I'll need a cup of tea after all that. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.